Hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and today I'm here to do a quick review of a Polestar 2. This is the 2024 version of the Polestar with some slight refreshes and some slight changes in it. I want to first thank Polestar Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle. Always excited to get press vehicles. Really competent car, I have to admit. They've done some great stuff in improving it for 2024. Uh, right now, Polestar, I think in the last couple of years, have sold about 22 to 25,000 units in North America. It's hard to find exact numbers. A decent um, offering for trying to make their way it, with their first, of course, all electric in a mass scale. And they continue to churn out the Polestar 2s in some decent quantities as they continue to ramp up here for 2024. So sit back, relax, and hope you learned something about the 2024 Polestar 2. Now, as I mentioned, the Polestar 2 has been around for a couple of years now. They originally released it with a front-wheel drive variant and then came out with an all-wheel drive variant shortly after that. I've driven both, so you can check back on my channel to see. Just going to try to focus on some of the changes and really where this car shines. And for 2024, they have done some design changes, some tweaks, make it a little bit more modern-ish, even though it's fairly modern looking to begin with. Um, you know, more rounded, some more angles here as well. Just had a really nicer exterior, and a, a lot of that exterior has upgraded tech behind it, and that's kind of the meat of really where a lot of the 2024 refresh or this slight update to the Polestar 2 occurs is behind the covers where you really don't see it. You know, talk a little bit about that. But from a design element perspective, it's still all Polestar. It's still really noticeable when you're driving it around. The front end, the rear end, the light package, the light treatment, it's all very much the same. Not really much going on, changes there. It's very nice. Uh, that angular, the you know, the, the Thor's hammer type of look for the headlights that both Volvo and Pulsar have uh, integrated into all of their vehicles, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, really nice looking car. It does turn some heads, especially in this light, I don't know if it's a gray or a powder blue. I didn't get the color on this. It looks kind of powder bluish to me, but you'll make up your mind as you see my B-roll and stuff. Uh, but from a design, it's a very really nice uh, package. Has that uh, look that it wants to just kind of get up and go. It does have really get up and go. And again, this is a single motor variant. Uh, and I will talk about some of that details uh, right now. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of the changes are under the covers and the biggest change in the single motor variant for 2024 is moving the motor from the front to the rear wheel drive. Um, it adds a bit more of a fun factor and I believe it allows for a little bit more space in the front frunk because it's, a, it's still a pretty decent side. But, you know, according to Polestar, moving it from front to rear, uh, they had to recalibrate the torque ratio uh, and all kinds of stuff as well. But it does provide for a more what they call a playful car, an agile car, still retaining its compact, uh, compactness and complete sense of control, uh, but they say adding more maturity. So I'm not sure. It's a lot of marketing speak for different kind of handling, right? Rear wheel drive is going to be a little bit different than front wheel drive and handling. And I have to admit in the week that I've been driving this round, I've had no issues with it getting up and go, uh, passing traffic, you know, it's staying on the highway, all that kind of stuff. It's been effortless with the single motor variant. These are new motors as well in both the rear and the all-wheel drive version uh, with some more power output. So when we look at power on the Polestar 2, it now has um, the single motor has 229 horsepower and that's up from 231, so very significant. And a max torque of um, 361 pound-feet, which is up from 243. So, you know, it's a great vehicle and, and what they've also done is provide greater efficiency in that motor even though it's got more power and I'll talk about range and everything coming up. So really, really great job. And sticking with the specs, one thing that Polestar does is they, they say on their side what the battery is in the power. So this is a 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it's a good size, which I believe is a slight increase from the older models, allowing for more range. And that range EPA rated in here in Canada is up to 515 kilometers. And that's really good. And I'll have to say, um, I'll tell you a little bit more about my driving range coming up, but I think that that is extremely achievable. In the driving that I've been doing this week, boy, that's pretty close to, to a number that I could hit. So that's really good, in my opinion, to be able to charge at the beginning of the week and go the entire week in your normal driving without having to charge a game. That says something about what Polestar has done to tweak the efficiency of these vehicles. So they've done a great job there. 
So as I mentioned, the new motors are kind of what's in this refresh. Also charging has been updated. Still has your standard CCS charging array. Nothing changes here, no NAC support yet. But they have upped a peak charging rate for DC fast charging to 205 kilowatts, which I think is very um, capable in the industry today that we're seeing. So giving it a 10 to 70, 80% in about 31, 35 minute range. So again, sticking within that 30 minutes is kind of the norm now. Uh, for vehicles that have 300 mile ranges that have pretty decent batteries so you need a little bit more time but that's uh, very very good because the efficiencies like i said on these have been has been doing very very well in fact it surprised me how efficient this it was this week and i'll show you the numbers coming up other kind of new things really it's more about power performance and range that's kind of where they focused on here um, they've added a lot more features in what they call their smart zone uh, so the ability to provide um, uh, more uh, active safety features, the front-facing camera, they have a mid-range radar and some other tech 360 cameras and stuff to really enhance the, the experience and provide more tech to make that vehicle safety uh, more safer and add to your driving experience and make things easier for you. So that's kind of the bulk of what's happening with the refresh. Um, I'll show you the quick interior, talk a little bit about that, but not really many changes in the interior that I could see, it's still relatively the same. Um, and the drivability, I say, is pretty well the same. Um, again, with the rear-wheel drive, you get a little, little bit different sensation in some of the cornering and some of the maneuvering, but it's a very fun car to drive and very, very agile and adequate. So the Polestar interior has remained relatively unchanged since it hit the premium EV market in 2019. It blends a Scandinavian design and excellent usability with fun driving characteristics and a dedication to sustainability. The Polestar 2 was the first car in the world to feature an infotainment system powered by Android Automotive OS with Google built in. An experience that continues to evolve and leads the industry. The latest of which adds connectivity between personal Google devices such as Google Home products and the car. Additionally, for 2024, the wireless phone charger is now included as standard on all versions of the Polestar 2. Cargo space is pretty good with 14.3 cubic feet with the seats up, and if you put that second row down, you increase it to 38.7 cubic feet. Um, so really good size, and that's including the underfloor, which is a pretty big space, as you'll see. Um, you'll see in these pictures, I was able to pick up a lawnmower in a pretty big box and put it into the vehicle, just taking out the shelf. Um, the, there is a front with 1.2 cubic feet of space, has a 907 kilo towing capacity with 75 kilos for a roof rack. So quickly driving the Polestar 2, I mean, it drives just the, the way well it, uh, it did before. You know, it's comfortable, it's quiet. Um, suspension is a little on the firm side, but still very capable and comfortable. It doesn't throw people around too much. You can change some, some steering dynamics, some of the one pedal driving, a couple different settings there. Very easy, nimble car to drive around. The rear wheel drive, you can feel that in some uh, corners, as I said, which gives it a little bit more of a fun factor, but a very capable drive. Um, again, ergonomics is going to be something that it's going to be for you. So you would have to sit and see if this is big enough. For me, it's a little constraint, but you know, I have some friends who have these and they absolutely love them. So it's a very nice car, well built, no squeaks, rattles. Everything works really well from that perspective. And the biggest surprise in driving is the range. Easily, I think I could have hit that EPA number of 550 and I was uh, at about 475 with about 12% still less left. Uh, so no, no concern in my mind that I could hit that number and that's just about a week of city a little bit of highway driving with a 15.2 kilowatt hour per 100 uh, efficiency rate that's really good so whatever they've done to this vehicle to enhance the efficiency and uh, that driving dynamics by putting the single motor into the back I think really enhances this car and that would be my pick if I were to get one of these two models I wouldn't get the all-wheel drive I would get the front wheel or the rear wheel drive single motor personally but I understand people want all-wheel drive for some sort of us circumstances and situations so anyway Polestar you've done a great job in this vehicle easy to drive keep it going so as I said in my summaries um, I think Polestar has done a great job with this refresh uh, making the battery more efficient has really added to the range their tweaking has done a great job it's worth 
the money, if this is the style and the type of vehicle that you want from this manufacturer. The long range um, single motor variant, the rear wheel drive, as I mentioned, um, uh, with that 515 kilometers of EPA range. Uh, MSRP is $54,950 Canadian. And you can, of course, add all kinds of options to it. I think they've made some of the option packages a bit simpler because they've added some more standard features in here that you used to have to pay for. So you're getting a better value on this vehicle for the price point that's probably lower when you combine all those things up. Uh, I believe both do qualify for the $5,000 federal rebate and they will qualify in many of the provinces and in the U.S. and the states. And, and you'll have to check as far as the IRA incentives what this will qualify for because I don't believe that anything is built in North America so it may or may not qualify. But you'll have to check. There might be state incentives though so always don't forget about, uh, about where you are you might have an incentive. So in closing, I certainly recommend the Polestar 2. I'm really happy with the um, uh, changes that they've done and the refinements. It's more of tweaks just to make the vehicle better and to make it more efficient and to give it a little bit funner ride by moving that single motor back to the rear. I think it's a very capable car, very nice car for those that like this style and that want a, uh, a sedan with, with the hatch and the hatch has been very convenient. You know, I bought a, a, big, I bought a new lawnmower last weekend, threw it in the back here quite easily with the big box and everything and no problem getting it in. So this thing is very versatile having that hatch as well. So great, great job on Polestar for making something that was already very nice, even better, and I think it's definitely worth a look.